नमस्कार माई डियर स्टूडेंट्स टूडे इन द डेंटल मटीरियल सेक्शन वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक दैट इज डेंटल कास्टिंग एंड ऑयल्स आई गॉट मेनी रिक्वेस्ट फॉर दिस टॉपिक एज दिस टॉपिक इज लॉन्ग सो आई विल बी कवरिंग द इम्पॉर्टेंट टर्म्स एंड द क्लासिफिकेशन सिस्टम्स ऑफ डेंटल कास्टिंग एलोइज इन दिस वीडियो नाउ रिगार्डिंग द एग्जाम इट कम्स इज अ शॉर्ट नोट अ लॉन्ग नोट इन द थियोरी एग्जाम and also it is often asked in the grand viva so let's begin now let us first understand a dental restoration can be of two types the direct and the indirect the direct restoration they are entirely fabricated and completed directly in the patient's mouth a cavity is made and in that the direct restorative material is placed for example gold amalgam dental composites second are the indirect restorations they are those which are fabricated outside the patient's mouth in the lab okay then they are looted or bonded onto the tooth for example the inlays onlays and the crowns these indirect restorations can be made by first they can be the prefabricated ones like the prefabricated post and coats which are available second are they are prepared by the casting procedures which need certain casting alloys which we will talk about in this video third are the cad cam you know cad cam is computer aided design and the computer aided manufacturing this helps to manufacture fabricate the dental restorations like crowns inlays and the veneers now before we proceed first of all what is casting you know casting is the process by which a wax pattern of a restoration is converted to replicate in a dental alloy this is the wax pattern the casting procedure is done and this is duplicated to form a metal crown okay using the casting alloys now we will be discussing these casting alloys in this video now there are some important terms which you should know first is metal metal is any element whose atomic structure readily loses it loses electrons to form positively charged ions now this will exhibit metallic bonding opacity they have luster and high electrical and thermal conductivity so this is a metal now these metals can be noble metal and base metal depending on the properties first let us discuss what is a noble metal the metals which are highly resistant to three things highly resistant to oxidation highly resistant to dissolution in organic acids and third they are resistant to corrosion okay that is why they are used for fabricating the inlays crowns and fpds because they are resistant to corrosion in the mouth now there are eight noble metals platinum rhodium rubidium gold osmium iridium silver and palladium now this can be asked in the viva and it also can come in the mcqs you can remember these eight noble metals by a mnemonic peter and ruby reached global office in safe position p for platinum r for rhodium r for rubidium g for gold o for osmium i for iridium s for silver and p for palladium now you may be asked that one noble metal which is not considered noble in dentistry in oral cavity that is silver because silver can tarnish in the oral cavity so it is not considered as noble the next important term is precious metal okay you understand the word precious now here the term precious indicates the intrinsic value of the metal you know all the noble metals they are precious but all the precious metals need not be noble okay the second important term is base metal a metal that is opposite to the noble metal a metal that will readily oxidize or dissolve to release iron is the base metal now an important term alloy very commonly asked in the viva also what is an alloy so a crystalline substance with metallic properties that is composed of two or more chemical elements at least one of which should be metal 
okay so that is an alloy for example nichrome that is nickel chromium alloy second is the stainless steel now what are the uses of these casting alloys first is it is used to make the inlays onlays posts okay second it is used to make the all metal crowns and bridges then it is also used to make the copings for the metal ceramic crowns okay the pfm crowns and the fpds then rpd denture frameworks and also the complete denture frameworks now let us discuss the desirable properties of the dental casting alloys very important first is the biocompatibility you know it should be non toxic and non allergic then only it can be used in the oral cavity second ease of melting not only melting ease of cutting grinding it should be easy to fabricate then ease of brazing that is soldering ease of polishing it should result in a finally polished restoration then little solidification shrinkage you know it should have minimal shrinkage on cooling after the casting next minimal reactivity with the mold material in which the casting is done it should have good wear resistance because it has to work in the oral cavity and take all the forces that is why it should have higher strength also then excellent corrosion resistance because it will always be in the wet environment of the oral cavity last but very important is the porcelain bonding for the success of the porcelain fused to metal restorations now we will discuss the classification systems of dental casting alloys you know there are many classifications which are given in different books i have taken some of the very important classification systems and you often get a long note so try to memorize as many classifications you can at least two to three classification systems you should write so first the classification system is based on the alloy types based on hardness and the yield strength that is the mechanical properties second alloy types by use third alloy types by nobility fourth alloy type by major elements fifth alloy type by the principal three elements which are present in the alloy the main three elements the last is the alloy type by number of the elements present like the two or the three uh, elements which are present in the alloy so we will discuss them one by one so the first classification is the alloy types based on the hardness and the yield strength you know originally this classification was used for the gold alloys this is ads specification number 5 but then uh, later all the dental alloys were used till the yield strength and the percentage elongation criteria can be included now according to this classification there can be four types of alloys in this we have the type 1 soft alloys in this the yield strength is around 140 megapascals it has low hardness okay the percentage elongation and ductility is 18% minimum it is mainly used where the stresses are minimal okay for example the inlays okay type 2 are the medium alloys 140 to 200 megapascals of yield strength medium hardness elongation is just similar to the type 1 they are mainly used uh, to form the onlays 3/4 crowns you know they can be subjected to moderate stresses type 3 are the hard alloys 200 to 340 megapascals of yield strength high hardness 12% minimum elongation they are mainly used in the areas of greater stresses they can also be age hardened uses are crown and the short span bridges type 4 are the extra hard alloys 340 to 500 megapascals of yield strength extra high hardness 10% minimum of elongation they are mainly used for the long span bridges or the partial denture frameworks which are subjected to very high stresses they can also be age hardened now as we observe as we go from the type 1 to the type 4 alloys the strength and hardness is increasing while the elongation and the ductility is decreasing 
So this is the first classification system and very important one. After the first classification, the second classification that we will discuss is the alloy types by use. Now, depending on the users, the alloys can be of three types. First is the all metal uh, restorations, the alloys which will fabricate the all metal restorations, the alloy which will help in making the metal ceramic restorations. In this, the alloy is used to make the coping and over that the ceramic is uh, applied okay they mainly form the porcelain fused to metal restorations so they should have good porcelain bonding third to form the removable denture or complete denture framework now these type of alloys should have high strength high hardness okay now coming to the all metal all the three types of alloys can be used to make the all metal restorations the noble metal alloys the base metal alloys and the other alloys in the noble metal we have two the gold based and the non gold based in the gold based type 3 type 4 in the non gold based we have silver palladium okay coming to the base metal base metal remains the same in everything nickel based and the cobalt based alloys other alloys this you have to remember copper zinc with indium and nickel then silver indium with palladium okay now coming to the metal ceramic in the noble metal and the base metal we have two categories the noble metal every alloy will have palladium okay just remember so first we have gold platinum and palladium then we have gold palladium with silver then just gold and palladium then palladium with silver and high palladium okay so now it is easy to remember second is the base metal alloys again nickel based and the cobalt based In this we have nickel chromium and the cobalt chromium alloy okay coming to the removable denture frameworks we need a harder alloy the most common alloy which is used is the cobalt chromium alloy okay base metals are most commonly used to form the frameworks cobalt chromium alloy nickel chromium alloy and the combination of three cobalt chromium nickel so these three are easy to remember then silver palladium and the aluminium bronze alloy which are less used okay Now, after this, the third classification is alloy types by nobility. Now, based on the nobility, the alloy types by nobility, they can be high noble, noble and predominantly the base metal. Okay. Now, this alloy classification is of American Dental Association in 1984. Now, the alloy types can be high noble based on the gold content. Okay, so high noble metal will have more than 40 weight percent of gold and more than 60 weight percent of the noble metal elements. That is why it is called as high noble. It can be a combination of any of the noble metals. Second are the noble metals which contain more than 25 weight percent of the noble metal elements in the alloy. Third are predominantly base metal. That means the uh, quantity of the uh, noble metal is decreased so it contains less than 25 8 percent of the noble metal uh, element in the alloy and last are the base metal which do not contain the noble metal like the nickel chromium alloys cobalt chromium alloys titanium and alloys and the aluminium bronze alloys after the nobility the next classification is the alloy types by the major elements which are present in the alloy alloy types by the major elements the major element which is present in the alloy they can be of five categories the gold based palladium based nickel based cobalt based and the titanium based these are the five major categories based on the major element. It can be remembered by the mnemonic government projects of national capital territory. Okay, G gold, P palladium, N for nickel, C for cobalt and T for titanium. Now the next classification is the alloy types by the principal three elements. The main three element, the previous classification was the one major element and this will depict according to the three elements which are present in the alloy. 
based on the principal three elements now it is easy to remember if you remember the previous classification the five categories of major elements let us remember the government projects of national capital territory that is gold based palladium based nickel based cobalt based and the titanium based now from this you can get the five categories of the principal three elements first is gold based gold palladium silver then palladium based palladium silver tin then nickel based nickel chromium beryllium cobalt based cobalt chromium molybdenum titanium based titanium aluminium vanadium so these are the five categories based on the principal three elements Now coming to the last uh, classification system, the alloy types by the number of elements which are present in the alloy. So the alloy types by the number of the elements which are present in the alloy. They can be binary, ternary or quaternary. Binary when two elements are present in the alloy, it is called binary. Ternary three when three elements are present in the alloy it is ternary and quaternary when four elements are present in the alloy it is called as quaternary so with this we are done with all the classification systems of dental casting alloys so stay tuned and keep watching my dear students do like and share the video with your friends and your juniors you can give your topics in the comment section Wish you success today and always.